Hey guys, Ron here, and a few months ago I made a video in which I turned some video game characters into Pokemon. I tried my best to consider how their abilities translate into Pokemon moves and stats, and because of that you guys enjoyed part 1 where I made Pokemon based on icons like Sonic and Pac-Man, but check that video out if you haven't. We'll continue with some more fan favorite protagonists. Keep in mind the types and concepts of these Pokemon aren't going to literally be the same as their inspiration. Just because I'm making a Steve Pokemon, that doesn't mean it's going to be a blocky humanoid normal type with a pickaxe. I want to create separate believable Pokemon that have unique concepts based on their origin. So I already mentioned that I want to make a Pokemon based on the player character of the best-selling video game of all time, Minecraft. Since the player isn't really much of a character, I'm going to make a general Minecraft Pokemon. A Pokemon that mines and crafts and has a blocky head. So I was thinking of a bunch of animals that build structures, and beavers are an option, but I need it to mine, not just craft. Bug warning, I guess. Bees are associated with Minecraft and their hives are segmented like blocks. But again, I want something terrestrial. Ants are very close to what I want, but they're a bit round and I don't just want to make a blocky ant. It'll kind of look like a Minecraft ant instead of a Pokemon. Thank God, the most famous uh, structure building bug is a termite. They're exactly what I need. They mine and craft. And most importantly, soldier termites have these huge heads that I can definitely turn into a block. So how about I make a termite Pokemon that has a brick aesthetic kind of like the Minecraft blocks, and it'll be able to craft brick tools and weapons using its ground type abilities. Starting off with a cube for a head, and then blocking in the thorax and abdomen of this bug, I know I want one arm to be defending and another attacking. I was originally going to give it uh, straight up termite mandibles, but once I gave it blocky eyes, nose, and even an abdomen, I decided to make the mandibles blocks as well. The eyes are basically angry Steve eyes, then some brick patterns and a sword made of bricks, this guy can change the shape of its brick arms to make tools and weapons, just refining it so the concept is clear, and giving it brick colors which is the same as the color of a soldier termite's big head, and the rest of the body is cream white like termites, just making the head more comically big so its proportions are more like a Pokemon's. And here is Termine, the crafting Pokemon, a bug and ground type. These Pokemon live together with other Termine in highly social colonies. They are very well trained in both combat and crafting. From dusk till dawn, worker Termine are constantly building up defenses, tunneling through terrain and creating giant homes for their fellow Termine. They use partially digested wood and earth to create bricks that fortify their elaborate nests. They even turn their special cement into tools and weapons that are attached to their bodies. They can instantly craft a new brick weapon in the midst of battle. When their nest is breached by a predator, a specialized group of Termine will use their own body as a brick wall. Termine are some of the most successful Pokemon on Earth. Their societies are complex and efficient. They have the abilities Mold Breaker and Scrappy with a new hidden ability called Craft, which allows them to turn the berry that they hold into a tool that boosts one of their stats right at the beginning of the battle. All the berries in Pokemon are split into five categories for each stat, so berries like the Cherry and Lychee berries help Termine craft an attack boosting weapon, while Chesto and Ganlon berries boost defense. Their shiny is more of a reference to the iconic grass block and Steve's color scheme. Honestly, this Pokemon would actually work as a Pokemon. It's got the Minecraft vibe, but this isn't a literal Steve Pokemon. The block head makes total sense with the huge head soldier termites have, and I'm a big fan of heroes that can instantly create their weapons using the material on their arm, like Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. Next, I want to make a Samus Pokemon. This Pokemon will be a bounty hunter, or at least a hunting Pokemon. Something menacing with armor. So how about something with a shell? Originally, I wanted to make this Samus Pokemon have a body that uh, meshed with a Metroid, but with limbs, I guess. And when you think about it, that's basically just a jellyfish or maybe even a cephalopod. So how about we base our Samus Pokemon on a Nautilus? It'll be shelled on the top half, but the bottom half will be long octopus tentacles that make up her arms and legs. One of the tentacles will even be a blaster, and she'll use that blaster to shoot uh, pressurized water. And then I'm going to combine the shelled octopus with one of those old-timey deep-sea diving suits, which will all come together to make it look like an alien, really. So it'll definitely work. I'm starting out with what I'm confident about, and that is the shell helmet and shoulder pads along with the coiled tentacle blaster. The problem is the lower half. Do I make it look feminine? Well, I tried sketching her tentacle in the shape of a woman, but then just settled with tentacles that kind of make it look like it has a waist and thighs, giving it a helmet akin to the deep sea suits with a tube that is actually the funnel octopi have. Some pretty eyes and patterns that Nautilus shells have. I began refining the design and changing some proportions. Towards the end, I realized I needed a way to show all four bottom tentacles, as well as a way to make it look like her legs are both orange and yellow. I decided to tangle her bottom tentacles. This helped 
them look more like legs and conveyed a more alien aesthetic. I gave her a mouth-like design on her face and finally added the classic Samus colors. Since Octopi can change colors, I didn't have to make her blue or anything. I'll reserve that for the shiny. I love the color of her blaster. Check out Cephalanch, the hunting Pokemon, a water and steel Pokemon. Cephalanch lay their eggs in a den and once they hatch, the larvae are immediately confronted with deep sea predator Pokemon. The very few hatchlings that survive become ready for battle and are driven to take revenge for their fallen siblings. They search their entire lives for those that harm weaker Pokemon. Mature Cephalanch develop a blaster in their prominent tentacle which becomes engorged with water that Cephalanch shoots out with enough pressure to pierce the hull of a battleship. Their projectiles are even more lethal above water. Their exoskeleton armor gives them protection from deep sea pressure and filters water so they're always performing at their most energetic. Their visors allow them to see in the darkest depths, and they coil their bottom tentacles into double helixes, which allows them to run on land and kick with double the strength. They're able to mimic the colors of their surroundings, and they can also withdraw into their shell helmet and spin around. Their abilities are Mega Launcher, Shell Armor, and the hidden ability Sniper. Their shinies reference to Dark Samus. Honestly, this is the best Pokemon design I've ever made in the series. It clearly represents Samus while being its own Pokemon. It's also a clever homage. I love how it gives off alien vibes with those Deoxys-like tentacles and space helmets. Cephalanch are all female, by the way. I would honestly have one on my team. I'm a huge fan of how well the blaster colors complement the rest of the body. Now we're going to make a Kingdom Hearts Pokemon, some kind of key wielding monster based on Sora. The only thing that we're kind of missing is what the body will look like. I know he's going to be Fairy Steel, but I want to avoid making it look like a vague key monster like Klefki. I can also make it look like a sprite, but then it would look too similar to Impidimp or Floette holding a key. So I'm going to make it based on some kind of tiny mammal. Now who's the most famous Disney character and Keyblade Master? His Highness Mickey Mouse. So I'll just base this Pokemon on a Disney style mouse. It'll have spiky hair and Sora's outfit, but it will still look like a mouse Pokemon. I mean, the idea of a sword carrying mouse is very prevalent in media, and for a Pokemon that will be able to unlock anything, it kind of makes sense for a mouse to be able to break into places. I mean, I'm going to start by making a pretty standard Pokemon looking mouse, basically a Pikachu clone. I gave him big shoe like feet to make him comical and endearing. And the Keyblade is basically gonna literally be Sora's Kingdom Key. I'm giving this little guy some spiky hair as an homage to Sora, finally some tiny mouse ears. I wanted to make them distinct from Mickey's ears so it's not literally Mickey. Its tail will be holding the key, and its stomach pattern will look like a crown, a nod to Sora's necklace. I made the face patterns around its head look like a cloak, but also the bangs that Sora has. It's got an Amolga look going on. Now I'm basically refining it all. It looks like clothes, but it's all the patterns on his fur finishing up the Keyblade, and once it's colored in, I decided to give him the retro Sora color scheme because it would look wrong to give him brown hair and skin color face. This will also seamlessly combine with the color scheme of Sora's outfit. Plus I didn't plan it this way, but it almost looks like it's wearing the black cloak that the members of the organization wear. The color scheme actually works really well. Meet Squeak, the Keyblade Pokemon, a fairy steel type. When I posted a preview of this mod on Twitter, go follow me there for sneak peeks by the way, Ace Trainer Liam suggested Mickey, which is clever, but this really is a Sora Pokemon, even though it takes inspiration from Mickey. Plus the Pokemon company would get hella sued if that was the name. So Squeak is obviously a pun on Squeak, but also contains the letters for key and the letters for sky, which is what Sora literally means in Japanese. Squeak use their tail to carry various keys that they use as blades. They're able to use these key blades to unlock anything. Squeak can break into anything and any place. They love discovering new places and will risk their lives to fight for the friends that they make on their journey. For their size, they're incredibly brave. They're able to use various forms of magic that they channel through their keys. Squeak's abilities are steadfast and no guard with the hidden ability Magician. I originally wanted to make an original ability that has to do with unlocking, but when translating it into battle, it was pretty much just the ability to not miss, so I gave him no guard. In the end, it has the abilities of Blade Pokemon and Key Pokemon, so I didn't really give him Infiltrator. I'm actually a big fan of this. I know I wasn't going to make a literal boy Pokemon, and the animal that I thought made the most sense to wield a weapon would be a cute little mouse. It's such a fun contrast and makes sense within both franchises. Plus, little known fact, Sora had ears and a tail in his early concept art. Now I want to make a Kirby Pokemon from Kirby. Here's the problem. Kirby already looks like a Pokemon, so what if I pretended that it was and made a Pokemon that evolves from Kirby? This Kirby evolution will basically be a Super Kirby, an enhanced version of what is already the most powerful being in the universe. So maybe I'll make it a mythical. Now I was thinking about what a Kirby evolution would look like and Meta Knight comes to mind. But I want to exaggerate Kirby's existing features and powers, not just add wings and a mask. Those have nothing to do with Kirby, but I'll keep the cape. 
The three directions I can go with are a big fat black hole Kirby, a more menacing Kirby, like how Poliwrath is the evolved form of Poliwhirl, or I can combine Kirby with its warp star and make a Kirby based on a shooting star. So for the first few iterations, I was basically just making a bigger, angrier Kirby, but it looked very cheap and easy, almost like there wasn't really a concept other than just older Kirby. Then I decided to go with a separate route, and instead of making Kirby's evolution, I decided to make a mega evolution of Kirby. This way, I could just make Kirby with added attributes. Instead of messing with perfection, I just added to it, basically superimposing a star over Kirby's normal body. Eventually, I decided to make it look like Kirby shed its skin and became a star. Instead of using a warp star, it is a warp star now. I gave it a cape that also looks like the tail of a comet or the trail of the shooting star. And this works. I, I colored it in with the obvious colors, yellow star and space colored cape. Now this is Mega Kirby. A mega evolution of the mythical puff Pokemon Kirby. When Kirby's infinity energy resonates with its trainer's keystone while holding Kirbynite, Kirby's plasma core bursts out. Kirby becomes full of determination to fight for its trainer. Mega Kirby is able to fly through the air as fast as a shooting star. It has unlimited energy and power. It has the abilities Gluttony and Imposter when in its normal form, but gets Levitate when Mega Evolving. The thing is that Mega Kirby is basically Super Kirby in terms of what it can do, other than gaining the ability of the Warp Star, but I'm not just going to start describing normal Kirby's abilities since it's basically what Kirby is famous for doing, like inhaling. I just knew that any design I gave its evolution would look uncanny and less adorable than Kirby, so I made this form a Mega so I can retain its exact face and aura. I love it. And if you love this video, leave a like and make sure to check out my other Pokemon art videos for even more adorable designs. Subscribe if you haven't and let me know which other video game characters you want to see as Pokemon. Consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and a huge discount on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I will post the full art of these Pokemon, and bye!